Yeah. It's the Mid-Age Gamer Report for September 14th, 2012. This week, Thunderbolt, not just for Apple anymore. New details about Haswell, kinda. A new NVIDIA driver and more! Enjoy. You know, for those of us who are crazy enough to pay the extra price premium to get decent gaming performance on a laptop, it's a given that there's gonna be some trade-offs. Graphics performance on these platforms will always outperform the meager integrated offerings, but it's still not the same performance we're used to on a desktop. Lest we forget the issues with power, weight, and of course the heat of these mobile monsters. So when an option comes along that can make just about any mobile platform a gaming powerhouse, with minimal effort, I'm going to perk up. Apparently Lucid, you know, the guys who are trying to make ATI and NVIDIA play nice in the same rig at the same time, well, it appears they've come up with a solution to leverage the bandwidth and connectivity of Thunderbolt to connect an external graphics adapter to your laptop. Laptop Magazine tried this out with a Thunderbolt-enabled motherboard and an external graphics adapter hooked up via Thunderbolt. The difference between the performance with the external adapter and without was dramatic. I'll link to the videos been provided, and you can find it here on YouTube, or you can also find it in the blog. Of course, I always put the links in. Anyway, you know, you got to remember that Thunderbolt has a direct pipeline to the PCI Express bus, so there's nothing really stopping a vendor from producing an NN external graphics product. There's also nothing saying an inexpensive desktop PC with a Thunderbolt connection couldn't do the same thing. Think of the possibilities. Gaming performance without the overhead and high price. The only thing that stands in the way is public adoption. There has to be a mainstream desire to do more than play Angry Birds on their laptop for something like this to gain a foothold. It's up to laptop and graphics vendors to make them see the light. In platform news, Intel released a few details about the upcoming Haswell processor family. Unfortunately, unless you're really into 10-watt CPUs and multi-threaded memory, it isn't going to be that big a deal over Ivy Bridge. The big push with Haswell is platform portability so that the same architecture that powers your desktop PC can Power your tablet as well. Ah. Well, in Steam news, the first green light titles have been chosen, and among them, a graphics overhaul mod to the original Half Life called Black Mesa. While certainly a work deserving of the spotlight, I still don't see Valve's $100 toll to get on the community ballots as fair. Also interesting to note is that the first game featured on a list of winners is in update to one of Valve's own titles. Talk about free labor. By the way, Black Mesa is scheduled for release on Steam's Greenlight Friday, September 14th. With the buzz around this game, expect the same slow download times and delays as the recent Team Fortress 2 co-op. In the strange but true department, it appears violent video games can raise your pain threshold. A study in the UK found that people who played violent video games for 10 minutes could keep their hands in ice-cold water longer than those who didn't. So, will it be long before we treat ourselves to a half hour of Resident Evil or Battlefield 3 instead of anesthesia before undergoing surgery? Okay, that's a stretch, but it, it is an interesting study. In somewhat related news, a stroke victim that hasn't been able to send an email message or even type on a keyboard due to a condition called aphasia was able to communicate using a hacked Kinect sensor. The victim's son figured out the specifics to allow his mother to again communicate with the outside world. Nice to see Kinect used for something other than flailing around in your living room while yelling at your big screen TV. Ha! I knew it!
Valve, parent of Steam, has been pursued by EA and offered up to $1 billion for the developer and game outlet. Now we know where Origin came from. Guess EA figured if it couldn't buy them, they'd try to beat them. If you care. And in our Can Gabe Newell Be Any More Hypocritical department, old Gabe is at it again, issuing a dire warning to Microsoft about trying to copy Apple Gabe's rumbling over the closed marketplace of the Microsoft Store and its barriers to a free marketplace. Yeah, Gabe, and about that green light toll thing? Yeah, thought so. In overpriced gaming news, Borderlands is due out on September 18th. We all know that. But if you just can't wait to start building your character, there's a skill calculator designed to give you a template to make him or her as badass as you dare. Ah well, the marketing departments are busy, still waiting for a Steam sale in 2014. For the TF2 cult members out there, Team Fortress 2 is looking for Halloween designs for its upcoming event. God, this is starting to sound like a community calendar. <laughs> anyway, special maps and boat signings are tradition around Halloween, and this year is no different. If you're one of those who knows their way around the Steam Workshop, you best get your creative juices flowing before October 1st start of the TF2 Scary Season. For all of you fans of Team Green, NVIDIA has a new driver for you that, among other things, enables the TXAA and fixes some issues with SLI in the 6X series of cards. You know, 680s and 670s and SLI. Yeah, I know, whatever. Even my old 260M on my laptop gets the new driver NVIDIA is calling the R304. Note that NVIDIA says this is it for the 7X and 6X series of cards being included in regular driver releases, moving them to legacy status. The next release, dubbed R310, will not include them. And we're talking not 680s and that type of thing. We're talking about like 6800s and 7950s, that kind of thing. Yeah, those are going to Legacy now. But if you have an 8800 GTX, I guess you're still included, so right on. Finally, thanks to all those viewers of the two-part Windows 8 Enterprise Eval videos I posted last week. In fact, they were so popular, relatively speaking, I mean, you know, look at my numbers, that only my vids on Battlefield 3 shortcuts and some weather videos rate higher. Considering how many views my weather videos get over the rest of the stuff I do, that is actually saying something. So, you know, I can only assume that my viewing public loves to play BF3 on a Windows 8 virtual machine during a thunderstorm while counting the remaining minutes left of the EVL. Even if you're not, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. We'll be talking to you next week.